It may seem there's nothing exciting about human bones, unless you find them in your closet. But normally, they're hidden under multiple layers of cells and tissues. They're dense, hard, and unassuming. But are they? Your bones not only protect your internal organs and help you move, but also store fat and minerals. Your blood cells are produced there. Most of the bone tissue isn't even solid. How about going on a journey through your bones to see it with your own eyes? But you'll need to get through several layers of other tissues first. To start with, you'll have to squeeze through the skin, your largest organ. Be careful! It's a labyrinth of hair follicles, sweat glands, nerve endings, and blood vessels where you can easily get lost. Right under the skin, there's a layer of fat. Its main purpose is to keep your body warm. This layer consists of tiny, plastic bags, each with a drop of fat, and you may have a tough time navigating around these bubbles. After passing this obstacle course, you're inside your muscles. Their cells, fibrous and long, are always ready to spring into action, helping you transport your body wherever you need. Moving through this layer of tissue is tricky because such cells form bundles, and that's what makes your muscles so strong. Imagine taking a bunch of rubber bands and stretching them. Hard? Your muscle tissue's tough like that. Finally, you reach your destination and see a thin, dense membrane. It's the outer surface of a bone. This layer consists mostly of connective tissue made up of proteins. You also spot numerous blood vessels. Their tiny perpendicular branches sneak deeper into the bone to feed bone cells. You notice that these branches lie in minuscule channels. The inside of the surface layer is filled with stem cells. They're the busiest in childhood and become less active when a person grows up. But if a bone is damaged, they jump back into action and get down to repairing it. Luckily, all your bones are intact. But if there was a fracture, you'd see nearby vessels bleeding and forming a thick lump around the injury. In about two days, the area would be surrounded by countless bone-producing cells. They would begin to change, turning into different kinds of cells and forming new bone between the ends of the fractured one. Anyway, it's time to move further toward your bone's hardest part, the outer layer, which is smooth and solid. Because of its density, it's also called compact bone. This kind of bone is the reason why x-rays, which can normally pass through nearly anything, including your body's soft tissues, can hardly get through your bones. This part makes up 80% of your total bone mass. It's incredibly hard to squeeze through the compact bone because it consists of numerous microscopic columns. Inside these cylinders, there are even more bone-producing cells. And in the middle, there's a central canal that connects the bone's nerve fibers and blood vessels. The cylinders go along the bone and help to prevent it from bending or fracturing. Once you get through this super hard layer, the picture around changes dramatically. You're in spongy bone, boing boing. True to its name, it looks like a sponge or a honeycomb that consists of tiny needles. This bone tissue is way less dense than the compact bone, more flexible, and also much lighter. You notice that the spongy tissue is only near the ends of the bone you're exploring. It means you're inside one of the long bones, whose structure is a bit different from others. In the middle, it has what looks like a tunnel to you. It's made of compact bone that surrounds a cavity filled with a special substance. It's called yellow bone marrow, and it's rich in fat. But it's time to return to the spongy bone. It's mostly found at the ends of long bones, inside vertebrae, and near joints. The sponge-like tissue has open spaces in it. They're filled with red bone marrow, which produces blood cells. While traveling further through the human skeleton, you discover that it consists of five types of bones. Long. They're much longer than they are wide. For example, your thigh or upper arm bones and your toes and fingers. Flat. They're thin and slightly curved. These bones are like a layered cake spongy bone sandwiched between two parallel layers of compact bone. Your ribs and most of the bones in your skull are flat bones. Short bones, shaped like cubes, they consist of a thin layer of compact bone around spongy insides. Short bones can be found in your wrists and ankles. Sesamoid. These are bones surrounded by tendons, and their main purpose is to hold tendons away from joints. There are numerous bones in your feet, hands, and knees, including the kneecap. 
These bones got such a name because they look like grains of wheat. Irregular bones. These don't fit into any category because their shape is too complicated. Those are most of the bones of your face and some of your skull. An adult skeleton's made up of 206 bones, and each of them has its own function. Interestingly, people are born with nearly twice as many bones. But as you grow up, these small bones fuse together and form larger ones as a person matures. If one bone's broken, those around it can't work properly either. It usually takes about 12 weeks for a bone to heal. The smallest bone in your body is dozens of times smaller than a penny. This bone's called the stapes and is located in your middle ear. The tiny thing weighs as much as two sesame seeds. You get a new skeleton every 10 years, because every year, 10% of your bone's mineral content gets renewed. The average person walks 1 to 3 million steps per year. That's why bones have to be so resilient, otherwise they wouldn't cope with the pressure. Your longest and strongest bone is in your leg. The femur, that's how it's called, runs from your hip to your knee. Even though your teeth are part of the skeletal system, they don't count as bones. More than half of all the bones in your body are in your hands and feet. The only bone in your body that's not connected to another is the tongue bone. It's a V-shaped bone at the base of your tongue that holds it in place. 1% of people are born with a 13th rib. Your bones aren't white. Their color is rather yellow or pinkish from the outside and deep red inside. That's because of the blood vessels in and around them. If you fracture a bone, ow, it'll heal on its own by producing new bone cells. A cast will only help it heal straight. People have known how to deal with broken bones for ages. In ancient Egypt, around 1600 years BCE, they realigned fractured bones and bandaged them with linen. Now, you can't control your bones. You can only tell your muscles attached to your bones where to move. Your bones reach their maximum density at the age of 30. Only 10% of the world's animals, including humans, are vertebrates, meaning they have a skeletal system. A coating of special tissue called cartilage covers a bone and prevents it from rubbing directly against another one. The enamel covering your teeth is even stronger than your bones. It protects the delicate tissue and nerves underneath. The biggest joint in your body is actually your knee. It has to be large to connect three equally big bones. The femur, going from your hip to your knee, the kneecap, and the shin bone. Some joints hardly move or don't move whatsoever. Those are between your teeth, inside the skull, and between the first pair of ribs. Bones store minerals, for example, calcium and phosphate. They can be released in your bloodstream when necessary. And finally, the so-called funny bone isn't a bone at all. It's a nerve that runs inside your elbow. When you hit it, you feel sharp, piercing pain. The upper arm bone the nerve runs by is called the humerus. But the pain is clearly not humerus. It can be funny when it happens to someone else, though.